بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقو قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب زدني علما وعلمنا دينا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقو قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب زدني علما ورزقني فحما My dear brothers, sisters, young ones in Islam, <coughs> I greet you with the greetings of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And mashallah, welcome back for another program of Divine Stories, mashallah, where we mention the amazing lives of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose in eternity to be his special messengers the closest people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the race of mankind. People like you and I, as in they all had feet and hands and ears and families, but they were destined to be the special ambassadors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world. People who were chosen by Allah and only Allah knows, you know, how he chose these people. Ajib, regarding you know, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, Allahu Akbar. How much patience, just to mention Musa alayhi salam, was once, <coughs> we all know, Musa alayhi alayhi salatu was salam, uh, once he was looking after his sheep, and from the, as you know, nowadays people have sheep dogs and they look after sheep, you have to keep them all together, because if one sh sheep runs, all of the whole, you know, flock of sheep follow him, or her. Now, on one occasion, a small sheep or a lamb ran, and mashallah, it continued running, running, running. So the Muslim lamb went after this lamb, went after the lamb, and after it, after it, after it. And this lamb wasn't stopping, had so much energy. And Sayyidina Musa Islam was going behind him, going behind him through, you know, bushes and through other places. And Hazrat Islam, you know, his feet were damaged, everything. Uh, and then finally, finally, after a long, long journey, Sayyidina Musa ala Nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam got hold of this lamb. So, you know, what would have happened to the sheep at the back, the flock, you know, all this was going to the Musa Islam's head. And so you'd be excused into thinking that Musa Islam would have, you know, ooh, you know, given this lamb uh, slightly more than a tap. But what did Musa ala Nabiya now alayhi salatu what did he do? You know, he said, oh, Deke, your feet must have got so tired. You must have become so tired after running this long journey. You know, sit down here and let me press your legs. So Sayyidina Musa ala Nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam, Kalimullah, the person who Allah talked to, Ulul Azam min al-Rusul, a great prophet, he's sitting on the ground and he is pressing this poor little animal's legs and saying, look, you must have been so tired. This is the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as I mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose these people to become prophets. And who was the first of the prophets? None other than our father, Sayyidina Adam ala Nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. The first man. And on the other side, who was the enemy? Shaytan. Lucifer. The grand enemy of the believers. So when Allah Ta'ala put Adam Islam on the dunya, and prior to doing so, Allah Ta'ala said to Adam, Oh Adam, your enemy will be Shaytan. And he will try his best to, you know, take you to Jahannam. Because that's where Iblis is going and he wants to take as much as the humanity with him. And Shaitan said, said this. He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi, Oh Allah, oh my Lord, because you made me go astray, I will now sit in ambush for, the, for these people, the sons of Adam and the daughters of Adam. <coughs> that I will make them all astray. That I will come to them from their left, to the right, from behind and from in front just to ambush them and you won't find most of these lot, these human beings, uh, you know, grateful to you. And Allah said to him, That you try your best, O Shaitan. You try your best. You bring forward your cavalry, your horses and your voices. And you washarikum fil amwali wal awlad, and you take a part in these people's wealth and in their children. 
and you try your best to make them g astray because the, tr the people who are grateful to me, they will never ever fall for your ploys. But anyway, Adam alayhi salam was sent to the dunya. And as I mentioned before, Allah decreed that Adam alayhi salam and Hawa would have their progeny in the dunya. And as things uh, you know, continue forward, one of the sons of Adam alayhi salam, Habil and Qabil, the two children, the famous story of Cain and Abel, Cain killed Habil. Cain killed Abel and uh, he was punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as I mentioned, then Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam cried for 70 years when he was taken from Jannah. And when this tragedy occurred, when one son killed the other son, Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam cried for a further 70 years. 70 years of crying. Allahu Akbar, our father Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. But what happened was, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Adam another son called Sheath alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. The word Sheath means a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheath, the name Sheath, as Adam gave his son the name Sheath, it meant a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way Habil was very, very righteous, Allah Akbar, as Sheath alayhi salam was also very righteous. But more than that, he was destined to become a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, MashaAllah, Adam Islam lived his life in the dunya. Some say a thousand years, some say uh, 940 because he gave some uh, years of his life to Abdul Dawood Islam. But nonetheless, when his time was up from the dunya, the angels came to take him. Allahu Akbar. The angels came to take him. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal reports on the authority of Yahya ibn Zamura, Asadi, that <coughs> I once saw a learned person. And upon inquiry, I was told this was Hazrat Ubay ibn Kaab anhu. So he says, Hazrat Yahya ibn <coughs> Zamura says, that I, that I heard uh, Hazrat Ubay ibn Kaab saying that when death approached Adam, when death approached Adam, when the time of Adam Islam was up in the dunya, he had fulfilled his, you know, allotted span in the dunya and it was time to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said to his children, <coughs> Oh my children, I desire a fruit of Jannah. I desire a fruit of Jannah. And this is one of the reasons why some people say that this Jannah of Adam Islam wasn't the Jannah al-Ma'wa, it wasn't the Jannah in the skies, it was on the dunya. And obviously there's different opinions. But anyway, he said to his children, you go and you find me this fruit. So his children went to find the fruit of paradise. On the way, they met the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had come with a special shroud from Allah and special fragrances from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other things to uh, <coughs> embalm Hazrat Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Because you understand this is the first yani ke, uh, natural, uh, this is the time of Hazrat Adam going from the dunya. <coughs> and he had to be buried and etc, etc. And they had to show the people how to do it. So they asked the children of Adam that, oh children of Adam, where are you going in such hurry? They said, we are, our father isn't well. And he has his desires of having the fruit of paradise. So we're going to find this fruit of paradise for him. So the angel said to these children that, Oh, children of Adam, hasten back to your father. Go back to your father because he is now going to meet his Lord. His 1000 years, his 940 years, 30 years are finished and he is going to be no more. So hasten back to your father. So they came back to their father. And then the angels also came. And when our mother Hawa saw the angels, Allahu Akbar, Firasat, she recognized these as the angels of Allah. And she realized they had come to take the root of Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. So she held on to Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. She didn't want to lose her, uh, her husband the way she lost her son. She didn't want Adam alayhi salam to go from her. So she held on to her husband. And Adam alayhi salam also realized that his time had come to an end. So he said to his wife, O oh woman, please step aside. I was born before you. I was born before you. Leave me alone with the special envoys and the special angels of my Lord, the exalted. Subhanallah. So he faced death. His time had come to an end. He's seen so much. He's seen Jannah, this amazing place. Allahu Akbar. He's seen Jannah, this amazing place of blessings. Allahu Akbar. He's seen everything he's seen the angels and then he had to leave the jannah and come to the earth and on the earth he's seen this terrible tragedy of his son being murdered by his other son allahu akbar so what the angels did was they took his ru'ah 
and then they bade Adam ala nabiyyana wa alayhi salatu wa salam ghusl as we do when somebody dies, except for the shuhada. Uh, they give him ghusl and then they shrouded him with a special shroud from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they embalmed him and then they buried him in the ground, made a special grave and they buried him. And they said this to the children of Adam, O oh, children of Adam, this is the way you shall, this will be your tradition of burying your people. This is how you shall bury in the future. <laughs> Adam ala nabiyya now alayhi salatu wasalam passed away on a Friday. And that was the day he was entered into Jannah. The day he was taken out from Jannah. The day he passed away and the day Qiyamah will take place. Friday is the chief of all the days. The chief of all the days to the next meaning of the hadith is Friday. It's the best day. MashaAllah. You see, the Muslims were given Friday. And then you had Sunday for the Christians and the Jews took the Sabbath on a Saturday. But MashaAllah, the best day, the blessed day is Friday. Amazing. It's the day before the weekend, MashaAllah. Anyway, he passed away on Friday. Now, where was he buried? Where is Adam ala nabiyyana wa alayhi salatu wasalam buried? Different opinions. One opinion is he's buried in India, near the mountain where he descended from Jannah. Allah Akbar. Where he descended, that's where he's buried. Some people say that when the floods came, the floods of Noah, Noah alayhi salam, Hazrat Noah alayhi salam took the coffins of Hazrat Hawa alayhi salam and Hazrat Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu salam and took them and buried them in Baytul Maqdis. So the graves are in Baytul Maqdis, but nonetheless, he is buried uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Now before Hazrat Adam alayhi salam passed away, he called his son Sheath alayhi salam, who was destined to become a prophet. And he told him, he said, Sheath, I'm now going to leave the dunya. And you understand we're here with the mission. We are here for a test. Our real place and our real abode was Jannah, paradise. We are here, Allah has sent us here. Allah sent our enemy here, shaitan, and he's given the shaitan the power. So much power he's given shaitan. He's given the power to whisper into your mind. He's given the power to shaitan to be sharik to be a partner in your children, to be a partner in your wealth. He's given him a lot of power. So he's our enemy. So you need to remind, now I'm going, you need to remind the rest of your brothers and my children, remind them about our enemy. Remind them about the promise of Allah that we're only here for a reason, our real place is Jannah. Remind them to be vigilant against this, you know, shaitan who's, given, who's been given so much powers by Allah as a test for us. Keep them you know, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep them on the straight path because I'm going to be no more. So he told Sheath al Islam the times of the day, told him about the hours of the day, told him when to pray and obviously uh, what times to pray. And then he breathed his last. And the angels consoled Hazrat Sheath al Islam, a righteous son, a righteous forbearing son who was destined to become a prophet of Allah. And he became then a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheath al Islam. Now Sheath al Islam. MashaAllah was a, you know, amazing prophet. He did what Allah Ta'ala wanted him to do. He kept the peace and unity with his people. Kept them all, you know, together. And he kept reminding them that this dunya is just a trial. It's just a trial. We're not supposed to be living here. We've buried our own father yesterday and, you know, soon we'll be dead as well. So the reason for this dunya is Allah has placed us here to do things for Allah's pleasure, to please Allah Ta'ala in any shape, way or form. Whatever we do, we do for Allah. And in return, Allah will give us our real place, which is Jannah, where you have no problems and you can live life like kings. And people listened to Adam Allah, to as a Sheet al-Islam and they held, held him in high respect. And he was a true deputy of our father, Adam Allah Nabiyyina, the first prophet. Now you understand what had happened was Habil and Qabil, Cain and Abel, that story had transpired. Cain had killed Abel. Now obviously their families continued. Now there was another person called Qabil, another person called Cain at the time of Sheet al-Islam. And this guy was very pugnacious, very, very aggressive in nature, very fiery, very ambitious and very greedy, it's mentioned. So he decided, to want, he said, you know what, I don't want to live with everybody else. I want to leave this area. I want to go from here. And he was from the descendants of Azad, of, uh, of, uh, of Qabil. So they left the area where everybody else was living in and they went to the flatlands, away from the mountains. And he took his family there. And they had children and they grew, they became a lot. 
the population became a lot. So much so that these people, the descendants of Qabil, and that person called Qabil himself, they grew so much so that they became more than the people of Sheith alayhi Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spent special instructions to Qabil, uh, sorry, to Sheith alayhi salam, and said to him that part of this deen, because he was a prophet, is that you have nothing to do with the people of Qabil. These people who had gone to this uh, flat land, nothing to do with them. This is part of your deen and your sharia. This is legislation from Allah. You have nothing to do with them. You live your life and let them live their life. Now that's fine. That's what happened, mashallah. But guess who was on the horizon? Shaitan. He was gauging things, looking at the right time to strike, looking for schisms, looking for weaknesses to exploit them. And that's what he did. He tried his best. Now, let me mention at this juncture that the people of Qabil were still Muslims. They were disobedient, but they were still believers. They still believed in one Allah. They weren't pagans. They didn't worship the sun or the stars or the wind or natural phenomena. No, they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were sinful. As, you know, insan are. But they were still on the monotheistic deen and they still worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, shaitan played his hand at that point. He wanted, so he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I'm a man. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to these people. Then he said, if I go to the people of uh, Sheet, they recognize me. So what I'll do, I'll go to the people of Qabil, the people of the flatlands, and they will recognize me. So that's what he did. He went down like a beautiful man. At this point, let me mention also, the people of Sheath, the men were very handsome. And the women were slightly less beautiful than the people of Qabil. The people of Qabil, the men were not very handsome, but the ladies were beautiful. So what, he, what Shaitan did was he came to the people of uh, Qabil, Cain. And he pretended, he said, that I am from uh, you know, Sheesh al Islam, I've defected. So the people of uh, Qabil said, you know, well, welcome. At least you've got one person who's defected. And he said, I want a job. So they gave him a job. Now, Shaitan worked very hard. He worked very, very, very hard. In whatever job they gave him, he worked very, very hard. Now, after a while, you see, this was the beginning of, human, of uh, you know, mankind. He started making certain noises. He'd get some kind of tarpaulin, put it over something and hit it with something. Like, like a drum. A very, very basic drum. Make some sounds. So people at that point, the people, anybody, whether the people of Sheet al-Islam or the people of Qabil, they hadn't heard any kind of melodious voice or tune. This is the first time they were hearing it. So they came all of a sudden and they said, you know, what's this? And uh, they thought, you know, this person from Sheet al-Islam, it looks like they're very advanced. They are much more advanced, you know, uh, in the sense that they're, they're making these special things. And on other occasions, you know, uh, Shaitan Iblis, in his disguise as a man, he would make, uh, he'd get pieces of metal and he'd hit the metal together, making this melodious noise. All part of his plan and the scheme of things to make people go from Allah and make them do sins. Because people have to be taught how to do sins. They have to be taught. And Shaitan, na'udhu billah, was the teacher of sins. He was the teacher of vice. The teacher of corruption. And his maqsad and objective was how to make people do the things which Allah Ta'ala is displeased with, Allah Ta'ala is angry with, and to do such things when Allah's azab comes, Allah's punishment comes, and people are sent to Jahannam. And his biggest mission is that people do shirk with Allah, Allahu Akbar, shirk with Allah. That means that they ascribe partners with Allah. They worship other than Allah. They may be worshipping Allah, but they'll take other partners, like the pagans of Makkah. They worshipped Allah and they'd worship these other idols, 360 idols in the Kaaba. And what did they say? They said, we know there's one Allah, but these idols are helpers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, you know, this is what they did. So his plan was to make people do shirk. Because when somebody did shirk, Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لَمَنْ يشاء. Allah will never forgive shirk. No way. Shirk, no. Anything else, if you do tawbah, Allah will forgive. 
so this is what shaitan was doing this was his idea to uh, make people go astray so he did he did these funny funny sounds and uh, made people enjoy these sounds so people would come to him to listen now what they did was what this shaitan did he made the people so much enticed into music and this entertainment that they actually fixed a certain day it was a saturday by the way they fixed a saturday where they'd have a gathering music would be played this you know uh, basic music and people would get together and the laws of allah would be broken haram would be committed now seeing that he'd got the people of uh, Qabil under his control somewhat and he had begun this slippery path to the sinning in, in, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he turned his attention to the people of Sheith alayhi salam now Sheith alayhi salam was doing what his father had told him reminding his people about Allah about the promise of Allah and about the devious nature of shaitan and the fact that Allah said in the Quran inna shaitan lakum aduwan fattakhidhu aduwa shaitan is your open enemy make him your enemy and reminding them to worship Allah that if they worship Allah they'll be blessed in the dunya and in the hereafter if they worship Allah all good will come to them and all harm will go away from them and above all by worshiping Allah they will get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he reminded them about the promise of Allah and the deception of shaitan and mashallah people listened now on one occasion what did shaitan do he said let me go to the people of sheath and he went to the people of sheath to the uh, youthful people and what did he say to them he said to them he put this doubt in their mind now shaitan has this power the quran says Allah is shaitan. You want to go and make these people of uh, Adam astray? My people, you try your best. You go and whisper to them. You take your cavalry and your soldiers, your foot soldiers, and you whisper and you try to deceive these people. Make them break the pact with Allah if you think you can. But remember this, everything you promise them is just deception. So most of the Mufassirun have said that was tafziz min hum man istadat be sautik that you you know try to whisper to them with your voice this voice means nothing else but music music the voice of shaitan is music a hadith of Rasulullah tells us sallallahu alaihi wasallam al ghina yumbitu nifaq kama yumbitu al mawzar that aw kama qala nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you know music has such power that it creates hypocrisy in the heart of man the way water makes a plant called aloes grow so quickly music has this power to make a person think he is something which he isn't music in short is the whispers of shaitan and this is what the quran says that you try to beguile these people with your voice i.e the voice of shaitan is music so next time you understand you know you feel inclined towards music allah keep it safe understand that this is nothing else but shaitan and another attack of shaitan upon the mind the pure mind of humanity um you know we've seen many times people committing you know uh, uh sins and in fact breaking the law of their country under the influence of music so when we understand that allah Ta'ala has said to us and the prophet explained and clarified that the voice of shaitan is music so shaitan got this power over the people of qabil and he wanted to go a bit further so he came to the people of shisa islam he went to the young people and he put in their mind this doubt he whispered to them he said to the people that why aren't you allowed to go to visit your cousins the people of qabil who live in the flatlands why can't you visit them what's the reason so they asked, uh, they asked Sheetha alayhi salam and Sheetha alayhi explained to them that you can't visit these people because they're, you know, they're, they're sinful, they're disobedient and because it is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't go to the people and because we are believers, we listen to, the, we listen to Allah. Allah is our Lord who we worship every day. 
she says, I'm explaining to the people. So they said, these people, the youth said, uh-uh, and they didn't accept it. They didn't accept what Adam, uh, what she says, I'm told them. They rebelled. A portion of them rebelled. And what did they do? They went. Without any permission, they left their lands and they went towards the flatlands where the people of Abil were. And when they went, they saw this gathering. And in the gathering, they heard these sounds. You know, amazing sounds, sounds, melodious sounds, sounds they never heard before. And they were enticed by these sounds. They didn't want to commit sin. But shaitan, who's been given this power upon mankind, enticed them. So they went closer. They went closer. And they saw people making these sounds. It was a Saturday night, just like today. Saturday night, the night of shaitan, unfortunately, in many places, where sins are committed. Allah's laws are broken. Mothers are in tears. Fathers are in tears, waiting for their children to come home. Saturday night. Saturday night fever. People go into a state of febrile convulsions in certain places. They don't care that they're breaking the law of Allah. And if death was to visit somebody in that state, Allahu Akbar, may Allah Ta'ala save us from dying in a state of nafarmani to Allah. May Allah Ta'ala save us from dying in a state where we are breaking the law of Allah. Nobody knows when they're going to leave the dunya. If you're leaving the dunya and you are breaking the law of Allah, it's like a seal. Because the hadith tells us, كَمَا تَعِيشُونَ تَمُوتُونَ وَكَمَا تَمُوتُونَ that you will live this world, you will uh, the way you live the world, that's how you'll die. And the way you'll die, you'll be raised up. So anyway, they saw this gathering. There were beautiful women there. There were songs there. And the women, they saw these men. And they, these were the beautiful men of Sheetha So they enticed them. And they attracted them towards them by wearing nice clothes. And they brought them into the fold. And the laws of Allah were broken like they're broken on Saturday night. These people then came back and they told others and next time they took more people and yet more people and this is how corruption began. This is how corruption began and this is when the two sins came. The first sin was the sin of music and the second sin was the sin of adultery. Shaitan at this point was feeling satisfied that his plan was working and now he was thinking of how to go further. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to live life the way Allah wants us to live. And the truth is, the life that Allah wants us to live is the best life. The designer knows his make and model. He knows what's good for this model, what oil, so to speak, if you look at the motor vehicle to use. Allah knows what's good for us. He knows namaz is good for us. He knows obedience to parents is good for us. He knows being good to people is good for us. He knows sadaqah is good for us. He knows zakat is good for us. He knows hajj is good for us. And science is now endorsing every single thing, mashallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you and I safe from the attacks of shaitan. And on the occasion when we succumb, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to do tawbah, to do istighfar, and ask Allah for forgiveness. Jazakumullah khair for listening to this episode. And inshallah, please join me for the next episode. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.